welcome to the MLB Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Mo Nawara in the Midwest. And we are looking at a pretty fun Tuesday slate here. We do have one game in the morning. The Cubbies are taking on the Pirates in Chicago. Probably going to take, I know Mo likes that game, um, but we're going to have to skip that one and give you a different one to make sure we get this video out to you in time. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. We are bringing you these videos each and every weekday of this MLB regular season. Also want you to head to thelines.com where Mo and the gang have great written content up there for you every day. Also have that great odds checker to make sure you are shopping those lines the best of your ability out there. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to ftpicks.com or dkpicks.com. Find those listings in your area, such as what we've got here. Starting in the evening time, we've got the Marlins in Cincinnati. I know we like that game there. Pablo Lopez on the mound for the Fish uh, against Hunter Green for the Reds. Tampa Bay, Shane McClanahan is in Baltimore, taking on the Orioles and Spencer Watkins. Pretty big favorites for the Rays there, minus 190. The Bravos and Spencer Strider in Philly, taking on Aaron Nola. Uh, plus 105 for the Phils there, as the, the Bravos are minus 125 favorites. Uh, the cards are in Toronto, taking on Jose Barrios, Andre Palante on the mound for the cards. A nice little subway series here that I know we're going to talk about as well. The Yanks, Jordan Montgomery on the mound against uh, the Mets and Taiwan Walker. F- minus 120 for the Yanks on the money line there. Mike Clevenger and the Pods are in Detroit, taking on Garrett Hill and the Tigers. Pretty big favorites for the Pods there, minus 180. The Guardians and Brian Shaw in Boston, taking on Josh Winkowski, uh, minus 145 for the Sox in that one. The Angels, Jose Suarez on the mound against the Royals and Angel Zerka. Uh, that is minus one, uh, minus one twenty rather for the Royals there. The Twins and Dylan Bundy against the uh, Brewers in Milwaukee. Ethan Small on the mound for the Brew Crew. Michael Kopech going back on the mound for the White Sox against Herman Marquez and those Rockies in Colorado. The Giants and Carlos Rodon and are in Arizona taking on those Diamondbacks and Tyler Gilbert. The Strohs, Luis Garcia is in Oakland taking on Frankie Montas. I know we're going to talk about that one. Pretty inter- interesting situation to see what the A's are going to do moving forward with Montas. Uh, the Nats and Josiah Gray taking on Mitch White and the Dodgers in LA. Huge favorites for the Dodgers, minus 245 there. And Dane Dunning and the Rangers ran out the night in Seattle, taking on George Kirby, minus 155 for the, the, uh, the M's there. So let's start with that Subway Series, which should be a good game tonight here. Montgomery on the mound against Walker. Probably a pretty good uh, pitching matchup. I know there's probably a little bit of an edge there for the Yanks, but what do you start on this one to, uh, to go ahead and pick the Yanks as I believe you're favoring them? Yeah, this is a matchup of a couple kitchen sink guys. Uh, kitchen sink lefty Jordan Montgomery. Kitchen sink righty, Taiwan Walker. Um, just basically, I just have significantly more confidence in the track record and peripherals uh, of Montgomery. Um, the big one that really sticks out is called strike plus whiff. Uh, that's, you know, really, really important peripheral. If you're not getting batters to swing and miss, uh, you damn well better be having an elite ability to get called strikes. Um, but... Uh, Walker's not really that strong in this area. 25.7% called strike plus whip. That's a, a decent amount below uh, average. And and Montgomery's sitting at almost 30%. So he's above average and, and validating basically his ERA uh, a little more than than the 2.5, I think, that uh, Walker's got. Fading him has not been good to me this year. I, I think I was legitimately underestimating his talent level. Uh, earlier in the season but when you look at his numbers last year um even at he was throwing harder last year and he had like 4.5 pretty much across the board on his era's era estimators so i think he's closer to like a league average type of arm and montgomery's a little above i think uh walker did change his pitch mix to feature his changeup more but yeah when he's not getting the amount of called strike plus whiffs that Walker or that Montgomery is, I just think Montgomery's a slightly better pitcher. And then the Yankees do have the the better offense too, uh, especially when the Mets are facing a lefty here. They're not quite as strong hitting lefties. Um, 102 WRC plus there. That's only good for 20th. Um, so a decent, a decent edge for the Yanks there. So but between the offense and the starting pitching, I mean, the Mets are one of the few teams that actually do have a bullpen that measures up to what the Yanks can do. Uh, but yeah, between the offense and the starting pitching, I just think the Yankees, I had them closer to minus 130. So I got the minus 105 uh, last night. I still think there's pretty good uh, 
room to play them at minus 115, which is where I'm seeing them this morning. It, it's it's still fine. Uh, so still still a good bet on the Yankees. And, and yeah, I don't think they're quite big enough favorites to where they should be. Yeah, I think that's fair, and I think I think Jordan Montgomery's been getting a little bit disrespected for a bit now. I do I do agree uh, as I, I believe I did mention earlier in the season. I thought that uh, you guys were undervaluing Taiwan Walker. I know Nate was also trying to take advantage of him a bunch, um, and he's just holds strong. He's really just I mean honestly, it sounds blasphemous, but he kind of reminds me of El Duque in his formative years with the Mets, where it's just like you know you're getting close to six, if not seven. You're getting you know three run three earned uh, on probably about five hits, but you know what you're getting and you know what it's going to take to win. Uh, the problem is I don't know that they have. What it takes to win tonight on offense against Jordan Montgomery, who actually has really good numbers against this Mets lineup in the past as well. So there is a bit of an edge there against my Metropolitans. But let's move on to another game here with an NL East team. We've got the Fish, Miami Marlins, are in Cincinnati. A pretty good uh, matchup there. I mean, Hunter Green does not come in with a great record for the Reds, nor an ERA. Uh, but some of the peripherals are pretty decent on him. I think he's at least giving them uh, some guts this season, you know, and there's a little bit to like. He did lose a uh, start last game that he, you know, pitched pretty well in. Uh, he's not necessarily popular. Lopez-esque at this point. Um, so that's why you do favor the fish in this one. But I, I did want to give Hunter Green his kudos and his flowers a bit uh, as he's he's had a pretty impressive young season so far. Yeah, in some ways, definitely. Uh, 3.73 Sierra. I mean, that's real, real strong for a rookie. Um, but I, I think his issues with contact management are legitimate and not like a, a huge fluke, small sample, whatever. I mean, his BABIP's only... 280. I'm sure the home run rate's going to come down. I I guess his like true talent level is something like his 4.48 xERA. Mm. Um, his xFIP is pretty good because because of the home run issues. Like they usually generally don't expect those to to last. I would say when he's got a fastball that gets squared up pretty often, and he pitches in a home park that's really bad for for allowing homers um I, I wouldn't expect them to totally go away and that's kind of the situation we have here um at home he's struggled a little bit more overall which makes sense when you're allowing a lot of loud contact that's not a good stadium to do it in 359 uh well allowed at home which is really really bad um so I, I do have more confidence in Pablo. Uh, he hasn't had the best run lately. His last few starts have been a little hit and miss. Like he had some really good starts where he allowed one run and some bad starts where he, where he allowed like five to some not great offenses too. The Rangers touched him up. But I, I still think with his track record and and I just think he's quite a bit better. I mean, man, it takes a lot for me to get, to get me to bet on the Marlins right now. I, I've been pounding the table, fading this team basically for the last two, three weeks, as long as they haven't had uh, some of their very good hitters. And yeah, it's just such a patchwork lineup right now. I would say the Reds are missing a key hitter too in Tyler Stevenson. And uh, I do think even when I'm baking in some some edge for the Reds, which I am <laughs> on offense, I still think the Marlins should be slightly bigger favorites. It's this is a you know it's a thin one. It's not a big edge. I had this one like close to minus one twenty five, so uh, around minus one fifteen is is about the limit where I would think I would play it. Um, but I still like I still like most of you know their team just as much as honestly the the Reds and and. The pitching to me is just pretty big. Uh, Pablo Lopez, he he throws a ton of changeups, and the Reds do struggle quite a bit against the changeup. They're, um, I think they were twenty third in against changeups. So he throws like almost forty percent changeup. So I think when it comes down to the pitch mix, it does it does say that even maybe the pitching matchup is a little more favorable for the Marlins than than the surface numbers. Um, and yeah, I just, I just think Hunter Green's going to keep struggling with the loud contact. So a little bit of value on the fish for me. Yeah. But and it's one of those games too, where it's like, you know, full disclaimer, you know, when, when you're betting these games, especially with such slim margins as this one, you're doing it over time, right? So if you're listening to this, watching this video and just saying, okay, well, you know, he's telling me that, that they hit the, the change up poorly and, you know, Lopez is going to throw the change up. And so, you know, that's, it, that's all great. And it, it, it helps us with the probabilities, but you need to be, you, you need to be betting consistently with these types of things in order to really um, be able to, you know, be, 
get the fruits of your labor at that point. So just want to be clear for those of us, those out there who are also hitting us up on Twitter sometimes going, oh, should we go with this game? You'll know when most super confident and, and when we feel a little bit more confidence in things as opposed to just telling you there's some slim margins here if you want to find it. There's a little bit of an edge. But more importantly, uh, you know, when, when it's a game that we feel there's a, a clear edge, uh, you'll get that confidence in the pick a little bit more. Uh, and I say that also as we move into this last pick that we wanted to talk about here with the Astros, because as I mentioned at the top, did like you did like the Cubs a little bit more uh, in their ability to win. We just didn't have time to get you that video as it comes out, as I said, 11 a.m. or so on the West Coast is when that one kicks off. So we want to be able to make sure we get these things to you. So we are moving on to a game that's playing later in the evening as the Astros are in Oakland taking on Frankie Montas, which is a really interesting game. I do think we like the Astros a bit more. Luis Garcia, clear favorite. It's a minus 165 there on the money line. So pretty big odds. But, um, you know, I, I would say in terms of the, the, the interesting aspect of this game tonight, it's Frankie Montas and the fact that, I mean, in his last game where he went, two, I believe he went three innings. He gave up like two hits, uh, struck out like a bunch of guys. Just they, they don't really want him to get hurt. But at the same time, they need to sort of show off this 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 young stud to see if they can get some some something return for him uh, as they have a ton of holes to fill and they don't really want to be paying people, as we know, in Oakland. Uh, so I, I guess in this one, do you think there's any uh, chance that Frankie Montas can come in last a bit in this game to give them an actual chance against the Astros? Or is this just a game that, you know, it should probably even be a, a bigger they should be a bigger favorite in Houston? Yeah, definitely a chance. Um, definitely a chance. Uh, Montas is a great pitcher. And if somebody told me, hey, he's going six innings tonight, I wouldn't bet this game. Um, because the the honestly, he might be a better pitcher than Luis Garcia. It's very close. Uh, their talent levels yeah. are, are quite close. Uh, so it's not a spot where um, – I, I see a big edge on the mound, uh, at least on the surface. But here's the thing about this game is I don't think Montas is going to stay in the game very long. They're kind of walking a fine line with him where they want to get him out there because they want a big trade return for him. So they need to get him out there and show teams that he can still get people out. And that's definitely what he did uh, when he came back. Um, only three innings, but he got five strikeouts. Um, so, yeah, five strikeouts, one walk. I was reading an article last week about his return and they said he, I think he got a ton of swings and misses. So he just basically looked like his normal excellent self. So if he stays in the game for a long time, then this bet's going to probably look silly, but I think we're going to get a lot of innings of, of A's middle relief here. Um, I don't think they want to push him very hard. I wouldn't expect more than four innings. If he goes five, I think that would be like, everything lined up and went right so i think we're looking at like four plus innings of a's middle relief which is really really rough yeah and the astros should just destroy whatever like whatever like guys they throw out there this is a great live betting game I, i think like if a's are hanging around early but montas is throwing a decent amount of pitches or even A's take the lead. Man, mm. if you can get a good price on Astros live, I, I really <laughs> think that they're going to have their way with this bullpen. Might not be a, a terrible run line op- opportunity here as well. To your point, uh, could also potentially look at, uh, you know, the, the strikeout numbers for Luis Garcia, if you don't believe in that Oakland lineup as much as we don't. But yeah, it's interesting that Frankie Montas is, is already uh, showing signs of being as good of a pitcher as, as, as Luis Garcia has been pitching very well this season. So that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us as we are bringing you these videos each and every weekday of this regular season. So until we see you next, happy betting.